In this video, we're going to take a look at utilizing four solutions to answer a common question that I get inside of my Microsoft Excel course. Now, first off, what's the question? Let's do a little bit of setup here. Open in front of you, I've got an example file. This file is called unique column list hyphen zero one. You can find a link to this file down below in the description. Look for the link, download the file. This way you can follow along with me and you can practice these four solutions. Now the question, I've got a list, something like this right here. And what I need to get from this list is a unique list of one of the columns. For example, we've got salesperson here. And as you can see, the salesperson, each of them repeat multiple times. There's multiple bishops, there's multiple Lees, there's multiple Parkers, and so on. I just need to know the unique values in that column. This way, I can grab those unique values and I can use it inside of something like data validation inside of Excel. Well, there's four different methods that we can approach this solution or to solve this problem inside of Excel. Now, I'm gonna take you through four of them. The first one involves, uh, it's a bit complex, it involves three different functions that we can use inside of Excel. The index, match, and count if function all nested together. The second one is to utilize the built-in feature inside of Excel called remove duplicates. The third one, perhaps one of my favorite features inside of Excel is pivot table. We can group the data salesperson in the row section of a pivot table, and that will return the unique values from that column. And then the fourth one, if you're a user of the newest version of Microsoft Excel, you may have access to the unique function, a really simple function. We give it the range of cells and it'll return the unique values back to us. Very cool, very simple. I've put them in kind of order from most complex, utilizing the index match count if, and then to the simplest, most straightforward, most accessible unique function in the newer version. So let's take a look at each of these here. The first one involves multiple functions, index, match, and count if. Now I've gone down to the index match formula worksheet and I've already completed the formula right there. This is cell L2 and you can see up here in the formula bar that I've got an index function nested with a match and nested with a count if. So there is a bit going on here. So if you haven't worked with any of these functions, this could be a bit daunting, but I'm gonna walk you through what's called the evaluate formula command that's gonna help us kind of break this down. Uh, it's a little more complex, but it gets the job done. So first off, we got the index function there. The index function takes an array or a, a range of cells, and then it says, okay, well, which cell do you want from that group of data? Which row in this case? Do you want row one? Do you want more row 20? Well, the problem here is, well, we've got the range, but I don't know which row we want back because I want the unique values. We need a way for Excel to look through that list and determine what's unique. Pull that out and ignore the rest. Ignore all the duplicates. So here we bring in the match function. And the match function, its purpose is to help us determine the row number so the index knows which row to return back to us. But once again, the problem is, well, the match is gonna look at it and be like, ah, well, you want a row back, I'm gonna give you back a row number, but which row number do you want back? Well, in steps the count if function. The count if function is essentially gonna look at the data and count the occurrences of the values. If it's equal to zero, meaning it hasn't shown up yet, then it's gonna give us back that value, be it unique. Okay. So let's break it down even further here. With that cell selected, L2, I'm gonna to go to my formulas tab. I'm gonna go into the formula auditing section and I'm gonna utilize the evaluate formula command. Give that a click. So this is a really neat feature, unfortunately, if you're a Mac user, you will not have this feature. So if you're sitting in front of a Mac, watching this video, sit back, relax, and we'll break this down for you. If you're on a Windows machine, <clears throat> follow along with me. Open it up, take a look. You can walk through and evaluate the different sections of the formula. 
Here, you'll see that a portion of the formula is underlined, in this case, the count if section. So the count if section takes two arguments. It wants to know the range of cells that you're looking at, and then comma, you see the little comma there. Then it wants to know the criteria that you're searching for inside of that range. Well, in our case, we're gonna take L1 to L1, essentially just that cell right there, and we're gonna to check to see if any of the values in D2 to D445 match that value right there. Well, they don't. So it's gonna have nothing to count because a unique salesperson is not one of the values in the salesperson column. So if I hit evaluate, we're gonna get back a bunch of zeros, meaning that that value right there does not match any of these values here. So it has nothing to count. So oh, I can't find it, so zeros, you can get back zeros. So now the match function steps in and says, hey, we're gonna find where the first zero is at within that array. Well, the first zero is in the first position. So when I hit evaluate, it's gonna return a one. And now the index function says, oh, this range of cells right here, we want the first row back. So if I hit evaluate, we get back Bishop, who's in the first row. Boink. Done. If I drag that down, there's all my unique values from that salesperson column. Very cool. One more time, if I select Lee, I go back to evaluate formula, same steps. Now it's L1 to L2, our range just grew because we no longer want to include Bishop in there. So if I evaluate here, it's now saying, oh, what are these ones? We didn't get ones before, did we? Well, no, that's because Bishop is now being is now showing up. Bishop, 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 it was either six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those ones, they represent Bishop. The first zero is at the seventh position, which is where Lee's at. So if I evaluate, there's the seven. From that range, we want number seven back. There's Lee. And there's the rest of them. Very cool, but a little more complex, a little bit more involved. But take a moment, really dissect that formula and see what's happening. Index and match are great formulas. And now we got a nested count if within there to help us determine what is gonna be unique by counting within the range. So now I can hop up here to cell I2 and I can use that as my source for data validation. So I can go to my data tab, data validation. I'm gonna create a list and my source is gonna be this range right here. I'll hit okay. And now I've got a little drop down of just the unique values based off of that formula. So I could pick one here like Parker, and I got a nice little formula utilizing the dsum function that references that Parker and sums up the sales based off of the Parker salesperson. Very cool, very dynamic, but it all made possible because we were able to extract out the unique values utilizing the index and match. Now that was the first solution. And once again, perhaps the most complex one. Let's take a look at another one. So this one is going to involve the remove duplicates command that's built into Excel. Now my remove duplicates, duplicates worksheet is currently empty, nothing on there. Well, in order for me to get this unique list utilizing the remove duplicates command, I'm gonna to go to intro. I'm gonna highlight D2 to D445. I'm gonna copy it, go back to my remove duplicates. I'll paste it in. Now with that selected, I'll go to data, remove duplicates, column A is where we wanna remove the duplicates, hit okay, and I've got my unique list. Much simpler, much, much simpler than that index match count if operation, but there's a few steps we gotta go through. We created a duplicate of the column and we removed duplicates from that duplicate. This way we're not changing anything about the master list. One of the downsides here is if the master list updates, our remove duplicates unique list will not update. Whereas the index match option, this will update. It's all a formula. If names change, if names rearrange themselves, whatever happens, the formula will update. 
If you add additional people in there, you don't have to copy, paste, remove again. You update the formula and you're done. So that's the second one. Pretty cool. We've got our unique set of data. Now we could use that as our data validation source. All right, here's the third one. Pivot tables. Pivot tables are perhaps one of my favorite features inside of Excel, and we can use them right here as well. So for this one, I'm gonna go back to intro. I'm gonna click into my master list. It doesn't matter where, just as long as you're in that list. I'm gonna go to insert pivot table. There's my list, A1 to G445. That's all my data there. I'm gonna put it into an existing worksheet and I'll put it on my pivot table inside of cell A1. I'll hit okay. So now all I'm gonna do here with my pivot table is grab salesperson, drag that to my rows, and I've now got my unique list of salespeople. Very cool. Couple clicks and drags in the mouse and you've got it. All right, next one, unique. So this is a, a very, very cool one. It's pretty straightforward, but it is a newer feature, a newer release of Microsoft Excel. So if you're not sitting on Microsoft 365 with Excel, you're not gonna have access to this function. You've got three other options, three other solutions though to work with. Take a look at this one. I'm gonna wipe out these values here. Inside of cell L2, I'm just gonna say equals unique unique there it is first thing it wants to know is the array or collection of values that you want to get the unique values from great so i'm going to go grab d2 to d445 i'm going to close my parentheses i'm done with the function i'll hit my enter key and i've now got the unique values all utilizing the unique function and all i did in there was give it the range of cells and it pulled it out for me so now once again I can go to cell I2, data, data validation, lists, and my source is this guy right here. I'll hit OK. And I've now got my drop down with all those unique values. So four different solutions to this one problem that we're going to run into inside of Excel. Just creating a unique list based off of a master column. So try these out. Get in there. Walk through the index match count if function, try out the remove duplicates, pivot table, and if you're working with the newer release of Excel, you can utilize the unique function. I appreciate you watching through this video. If you learned something new, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get updates for new videos that I put out there. And I'll see you in the next video.